Well, it seems like the fellows over at the Daily Wire are at it again because after the success of their last film, Terror on the Prairie, which streamed exclusively on the Daily Wire Plus and raked in a total of $13,115 at box offices worldwide, they're now releasing a comedy called Lady Ballers about dudes who decide to play in women's sports by pretending to be women. And I think that the screenshot behind me kind of tells you everything you need to know about the plot. It's a movie based on the one joke that conservatives have. Now, uh, this movie features cameos from Ben Shapiro, Ben Shapiro's female doppelganger, Brett Cooper, and Michael Knowles, Matt Walsh and Drag, the old guy from The Daily Wire, Jeremy Boring, the CEO of The Daily Wire, U.S. Senator Ted Cruz, and even Riley Gaines. Now, for those of you who don't know, Riley Gaines is the NCAA swimmer who tied for fifth place with Leah Thomas, a trans woman, and even though four other cis women beat her she has managed to turn her being a sore loser into an entire career and she's not necessarily mad at the cis women who beat her she's specifically mad at the trans woman who she tied with but now she's starring in a movie where she'll be able to live out her fantasy maybe as winner or runner up who knows we'll have to wait and see now it might seem weird that the daily wire made a movie and just put themselves in the movie, but I can assure you that they all have extensive acting experience. For example, here's a role that Michael Knowles played before he became a conservative commentator. That was... Wow. Uh, uh, thanks. Uh, have you not done it with men? Mind if we don't get into that. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. It, uh, it's, it's not a lot, is it? Can I get a towel? You, uh, want my number? Um, yeah, uh, sure. Thanks. Riveting. You know, it's really hard to understand why his acting career never took off. Now, I don't think that I could play the full trailer due to copyrighted music that it contains, but I will link to it down below if you want to watch the full thing. But I do have to play at least a brief clip specifically of Ted Cruz's cameo because I have questions. Excuse me. Are these seats open? <laughs> ne never mind. I don't get it. What's the joke? I don't <laughs> I don't know why they would include this in the trailer where they're presumably trying to gin up excitement to get people to watch the movie. I mean, if you are trying to generate some level of excitement over cameos one i don't think that ted cruz is going to do the trick and two just like tease the cameo say featuring cameos from all these conservative dickheads don't put ted cruz in the trailer when there's like no reason for that part like I, i'm baffled by some of the things that they included in this trailer but um, i've got to say that the movie does look funny but not for the reasons they hoped right i think it looks funny because of how bad it's going to be the writing specifically looks like ass but i want to get to the plot so you can kind of understand what i mean since i can't show you the trailer so the film is about trans people and how they uh have transformed sports and what they're calling the most triggering comedy of the year and the daily beast explains that it's about a desperate basketball coach played by daily wire co-founder jeremy boring and he hatches an idea to enter his hapless male team in a women's competition this is the way the world is now he says my eight-year-old daughter told me about it in the next scene said daughter is delivering a conservative's parody of gender politics to the team so a guy can become a girl with no physical changes at all boring asks her oh that's called being gender fluid a tiny blonde child actor answers smiling so i can be a woman on the court and a man in the bedroom nice a dumb jock player cheers the rest of the trailer is largely shots of men body slamming women in slow motion to illustrate, of course, just how much stronger and more powerful they are. I feel like this literally could have been written by a 12-year-old, but my favorite part about this is how it's being pitched. This is supposedly a bold, 
edgy comedy that's never been attempted before because Hollywood is too afraid. So Jeremy Boring tweeted this out. Hollywood won't make a movie about how laughably absurd it is that we now allow grown men to call themselves women and then dominate women's sports. So we did. Except that's not true at all. Parker Molloy provided multiple examples of other movies that have attempted this. And this movie in particular is basically a transphobic ripoff of Joanna Man, which is about a professional basketball player who dresses up as a woman and joins the women's team after he gets dropped from the men's team. And it was not good at the time because once the absurdity of man pretends to be woman wears off, you kind of get bored. So you need different jokes to keep it entertaining. And the writing of that movie wasn't even good. So the Daily Wire is basically making an entire film using the absurdity of, oh my God, a man competing in a woman's team and then trying to use dick and ball jokes to carry them throughout the film. But it's going to get tiring even for your most avid supporters if you don't switch it up. And no, I don't have the confidence that they're going to be able to competently write to make it actually funny or even enjoyable for the people who are transphobic and will enthusiastically watch this. But they're pretending like they're breaking new ground when this was already done in the fucking 2000s or the 90s. And a lot of people pointed this out and they mocked this film relentlessly as a result because it lacks creativity and it's just fucking stupid. For example, Cody Johnston pointed out all the best comedies stem from political commentators being absolutely furious. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's going to be great. Mia Moore says this movie is so cooked because even the broiest man dresses as a woman in hijinks and Sue movies ended with the men learning a lesson about how much harder it is being a woman and dealing with misogyny. And this movie can't do that because conservatives are incapable of empathy. Dr. Mike Crisis says this is Joanna Man erasure. <laughs> Proof you can give conservatives $10 million and it's still impossible for them to write a joke. You know it's going to be good because they cast their CEO as the main <laughs> character. <laughs> they made an entire movie on their one joke. Damn, they got like everybody who wants to inspect your teen's genitals in the same movie. Now look, to be fair, some people were enthusiastic about the film. Roseanne Barr, for example, asks when and where she can see it. Although if she watched the full trailer, they would tell you it's on the Daily Wire Plus. Us, but uh, apparently she didn't watch till the end, which tells me that, um, yeah, she definitely wants to see it. And Tim Pool says, LOL, OMG. So it got the coveted Tim Pool endorsement. So to be fair, you had a lot of people mocking it. But then again, there were a lot of conservative sycophants who happen to hate trans people who uh, seemed pretty enthusiastic about seeing conservatives say the one joke that they have again and again and again. But in reality, the goal is of this movie is not to make people laugh. That might be their secondary goal, but it's not why this movie was created. The Daily Wire does not have billionaire funders so that way they can entertain people and make them laugh. The goal is to disseminate propaganda. The movie was created by and for transphobes, specifically to sell people this caricature of trans people in order to generate transphobic beliefs. That's the goal, not comedy, hence the shit writing. Now, the extent to which they're gonna be able to sell audiences on this film is debatable considering the fact that this is only going to be uh given to their pre-existing audience as far as i know it's just going to be a daily wire plus exclusive so they might just be preaching to the choir here but ideally they want you to watch this film and see trans people through their transphobic lens and fear-mongering about trans athletes is an effective way to persuade normies that trans people do pose a danger in at least a minimal sense i mean if conservatives can't get normies to believe that trans people are bathroom predators trying to trans the kids maybe they can convince them that trans individuals at least pose a danger to female athletes and once you accept that premise once you accept any small transphobic premise maybe you'll be open to other transphobic ideas and that's the goal they try to hook you based on an outrageous lie but it is a lie they are lying to you this is a propaganda film and the danger isn't trans athletes. The danger is the transphobia itself. And fear mongering over trans athletes has led to harassment even against cis athletes who bigots perceive to be trans. Now, on June 14th of this year, I did a video talking about a nine year old girl from Kelowna who was accosted at a track meet by an adult because she was suspected of being trans due to her pixie haircut. Now, in that same video, we talked about trans athletes more generally speaking, and I demonstrated how this is one of the most sensationalized issues ever. And I want to revisit that because it's relevant again, and I'm not just going to say the same thing again. I already did the video, so I'm going to post a clip of that, a long clip, but an important clip nonetheless in this video so you can see specifically what conservatives are doing 
uh, when it comes to this issue. Because when you dive into the details and you look at the numbers and the facts, it doesn't actually lend credence to the claims that they're making against trans people. Now, there's this caricature about trans people that the right has created, specifically when it comes to trans people in sports, which probably explains the hypersensitivity of the jackass in this particular story. But I mean, there's this caricature where conservatives believe that there's this insecure man who can't athletically compete with the other men, so he chooses to identify as a woman specifically so he can dominate them in some sport. And this transphobic trope has been reinforced in pop culture on shows like South Park. But in actuality, this isn't a thing that is happening. Yet, the hysteria has led to trans and cis people getting harassed and trans students being excluded from school sports. Now, if this problem was so widespread with trans people just dominating female sports, then you would think that there'd be a plethora of examples of trans middle and high schoolers just crushing the competition, right? But in 2021, when the Associated Press reached out to two dozen conservative politicians who sponsored legislation banning trans girls from school sports in 20 different states, guess what they found? Quote, in almost every case, sponsors cannot cite a single instance in their own state or region where such participation has caused problems. And get this, GOP lawmakers in states like South Carolina and Tennessee even admitted that there might not even be a single transgender athlete in their entire state. But they justified this legislation by calling it proactive because they care about women's sports and little girls sports. Yeah, very interesting. You know, now, you would think that they'd have plenty of examples given how much time they spend focusing on this issue, but they couldn't cite a single example. These are the people writing the legislation. Isn't that interesting? Now, there's a reason why they can't cite a single example. And as Newsweek explains, privacy laws make it tough to identify the exact number of transgender athletes competing in public school sports, but researcher and medical physicist Joanna Harper estimates that the number can't exceed 100 nationwide. Now, to be clear, that's at the college level. It's just an estimate, but the number is very small. But what about K through 12? Well, Harvard Law's Alejandro Carballo, who's been tracking anti-trans legislation now for years, estimates that there is only 50 50 trans athletes in schools nationwide. Furthermore, Newsweek continues, Jillian Brandstetter, a spokesperson for the American Civil Liberties Union, said the number of transgender athletes isn't comprehensive, but she's also certain it's a very small portion of the nation's population. Brandstetter told Newsweek that Save Women Sports, an organization advocating for banning transgender athletes from competing in girls' sports, identified only five transgender athletes competing on girls' teams in school sports sports for grades K through 12. Now, I want to stress that the organization, the main organization dedicated to advocating that trans girls should be banned from playing school sports can name just five trans athletes competing on girls teams. It's a big country and all they could find was just five examples. In other words, there are more Americans who were literally bitten by a shark than there are trans athletes at the K through 12 level. In fact, the total number of trans athletes barely surpasses the average number of people struck by lightning every single year, which is 28, by the way. And sadly, you are statistically far more likely to die from gun violence in this country than you are to even encounter a trans athlete. But despite this reality, conservative propagandists have successfully elevated the salience of this issue to the point where we've seen a sharp increase in the number of Americans who don't want trans athletes to play with cis athletes. Even Democrats saw a seven-point jump, according to this Gallup poll, since 2021, when again, the number of trans athletes is statistically insignificant. But despite the statistical unlikelihood that your child is going to compete with a trans child, well, everybody has been worked into a frenzy to where now these adults are transvestigating children, accusing them of being trans and thus having some sort of an unfair biological advantage simply because of the hairstyle that they have, as was the case with Kelowna. But I don't want to make it seem as if trans athletes are some mythical creatures because they do exist.
And their stories are also very important. So let's talk about one trans athlete in the state of Kentucky. Her name is Fisher Wells. She was a seventh grader when she helped form her school's all-female hockey team. Nobody really was playing, but she got her friends together. They created a league for themselves. And when she learned that her state lawmakers were proposing a ban on trans athletes in school sports that would affect her, well, she decided to speak up. And I don't want to share her story. I'm going to let her share her own story because this is important. I'm Fisher Wells, and I would like to tell you my experience um, on the Westport girls field hockey team. Before, um, well, after COVID and we were just getting back in, the girls' field hockey team barely existed. It was just a thing that Westport had that nobody joined because everybody wanted to play, like, volleyball or something. Um, but then uh, three people signed up. Uh, one of them was me. And I tried my very hardest to get minimum amount of people for the team and we got that and on our first game I got news that I couldn't play and so I didn't play I sat at home um, watching television um, and then I got so many texts from my friends supporting me and then yeah I got these wonderful pictures we tied on that game barely by the way which was fun um, but later it was resolved, and then I started to find out how disgusting the reason I couldn't play was. I really don't want this bill to pass because that means I can't play, and it will be extremely detrimental to my mental health as well. Um, because I know that sports is a great way for me to cope with things. Like, it's just a good way for me to cope with things. Um, and it's why I recovered so very quickly from not being able to play because later, like a few days later, I found out I could play. And I was able to play and have fun and like every, like my coach was crying. Like she was like, oh my God, Fisher. Um, I just, it's disgusting that this bill is even suggested. It's terrible, and I've worked really hard and practiced so many hours. Um, I hope you don't vote on this bill, and I hope I can play in eighth grade. Thank you. So I referenced the Associated Press report about how Republican lawmakers couldn't cite any examples of trans athletes causing disruptions at their schools. But in theory, it's much harder to pass a really cruel policy like these trans athlete bans when you see the face of the person who you're going to be affecting, right? And because Fisher is the only known trans athlete in her state, this law would literally just affect her. So she showed up to tell her story and say, please, let me play with my friends. But even though this little girl took the time to explain to Republican lawmakers in Kentucky that the girls' hockey team, one, would not exist without her, and two, that her friends wanted to play with her, do you want to know what those Republicans did? Guess. They voted overwhelmingly in favor of banning her from the team that she helped to create. In fact, they overrode the governor's veto, even though they knew the law would affect one child in seventh grade who was hoping to be able to play in eighth grade. Now, maybe Fisher's story resonated with you, maybe it didn't, but I know exactly what you're going to say if you are not inclined to support trans people. You're going to say, Mike, we have to prevent these trans girls from playing with cis girls in order to maintain fairness and protect women's sports. We've heard this a lot, but here's the thing. The people who are passing these laws, they don't actually care about women's sports or girls' sports. And I say this because if they did then where the fuck is their outrage for things like this? I got something to show y'all. So for the NCAA March Madness, the biggest tournament in college basketball for women, this is our weight room. Let me show y'all the men's weight room. Now when pictures of our weight room got released versus the men's, the NCAA came out with a statement saying that it wasn't money, it was space that was a problem. Let me show y'all something else. Here's our practice court, right? And then here's that weight room. And then here's all this extra space. If you aren't upset about this problem, 
then you're a part of it. That was Sedona Prince. She is a female athlete who pointed out the inequities between the men's and women's teams at the University of Oregon. And what she's saying is that this is the problem. And if you care about women's sports, you should care about this. But what do conservatives do? They plug their ears and they point to trans athletes as the problem. Not what actual female athletes are saying are the problems affecting their sports. But as the human rights campaign puts it, the real threat to women's sports isn't transgender athletes. It's underfunding and lack of resources. And this is because women's sports receives far less funding than men's sports on average, with school spending an estimated 71 cents on women's sports for every dollar they spend on men's sports. And when you look at sports funding across the board, specifically when it comes to travel, equipment, and recruitment, the disparities here are clear. So Kentucky Republicans who banned Fisher Wells from her state's hockey team under the pretense of protecting women's sports, I mean, why haven't they addressed the $7,600 plus disparity in funding between men's sports and women's sports? Other states that we've briefly mentioned here, like Tennessee and South Carolina, are perfectly fine, presumably, with $3,000 and $2,000 differences in funding, respectively, between men and women's sports. But yet they called their sponsoring of anti-trans sports bans them just being proactive. What about being proactive when it comes to the actual problems plaguing women's sports and funding is obvious but really it goes much deeper than funding it also comes down to how female athletes are treated compared to men ali kirshner who is a woman's coach for stanford detailed the differences between male and female athletes at the 2021 march madness tournament and this is what she spoke about not only were there notable differences in facilities but also in food and merchandise as well in other photos shared by players there was a visible difference in the caliber and quantity of what was received by the women teams from the event organizers. Men received enormous swag bags and high quality food, while the women's teams only received a few merchandise items and lesser quality food. But I mean, the disparities in funding and treatment of female athletes, these have been long documented, but yet Republicans, they got everyone to believe that it's the trans athletes. They're the ones who are the real danger to women's sports. And this should be obvious, but I'm going to say it anyway. These conservatives don't care about women's sports at all, period. They concern troll about fairness in women's sports as a pretense to push transphobia. And that's why they do it. That's why they talk about this. That's why they make movies about it. The goal is to manufacture transphobic beliefs so they can then create a solution to a problem that doesn't actually exist. And they do enjoy cruelty for cruelty's sake, but the primary reason why they do this type of propaganda is to gin up a sort of wedge issue, create culture war hysteria over this issue to drive Republican voters to polls. But unfortunately for them, the recent special elections taught us that transphobia doesn't actually galvanize voters. This was a provable failure electorally speaking so this strategy lacks political efficacy but the problem is that even if it might not help republicans win it still hurts real people it's still toxic and it still creates a climate of paranoia and transphobia which is wrong so i don't know how well this movie is going to do but i hope it fails but i've got to admit that seeing the internet shit on this dumbass faux comedy does make me feel at least a little bit better but hopefully this is money that is wasted by the Daily Wire's billionaire funders, but we'll have to wait and see. Penis and balls, vagina. Penis and balls, vagina. P word and balls, vagina. P word and balls, vagina. Ass, gum. Ass, gum. Ass, gum. Vagina. She stroked my face with the vagina. She stroked my penis and balls.